Happy Friday. Join in, join in, join in, join in. Hopefully this is streaming. I'm a little paranoid because I did last week, did a, did a live stream for over an hour uh, by myself. It was fun, but I was completely by myself. Hey, uh, jump in here real quick today. I'm going to walk you guys through some good stuff. Make sure this is working. Looks like this is working fine. Beautiful, cool. take myself out today. Not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. Hey guys, welcome. Drop a comment as you're popping in. If you're watching this after the fact, have a really cool stream for you today. I'm going to walk you guys step by step how the four key pillars to produce free sales from social media start to finish all the knit, all the grit, all the details, everything, everything that you need, whether you're a startup company, whether you're a 50 year old company that's doing $50 million in sales and you're not yet leveraging social media to generate sales, this is for you. So make sure if you're watching this again, if you're watching this after the fact or you're watching this live now, take some notes. I got lots of stuff to cover today. Uh, take some notes because I'll do some whiteboard stuff, but I may erase it. You may want to get it down uh, and you can always jump back through this feed. I will do a Q&A with this. Uh, we j I kind of just started doing these live streams again. I used to do them quite a bit, but wanted to get some more going so I can help empower you guys on, on sales and getting your message out there, right? No matter what you sell. No matter what your mission is, what your goal is, your product, your service, it's no good if you cannot get it in the hands of the right people. If you can't get it in the hands of people or at least get eyeballs on it, then you're not going to grow. You're not going to progress. And social media is a powerful tool to, em to empower you, powerful tool to empower you in order to do this. But the challenge is there's a lot of noise out there, right? And there's a lot of information, a lot of gurus. Just so you know, I started my, 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 my background, I started my first business when I was seven years old. Let's see if this is, reposition this guy here. I started my first business at seven. And so this isn't so much like woo woo fluff stuff. I've literally been putting this into practice for years and have been able to leverage social media without any spend on advertisements to generate sales, high dollar sales actually. And uh, so I'm gonna get you guys all those steps here today. Now, traditional, a lot, of, a, a lot of traditional businesses, and again, let's say you're a coach, or you're in health, you're a marketing agency, you're in technology, you have some sort of app that you sell, you're in real estate. You're a real estate agent. There's, I know there's a lot of real estate agents I'm connected to here on Facebook. The traditional businesses are built by selling the brands, okay? If you want higher dollar sales and you want more sales opportunities, then relationships are what drive that. And so that's why when, when using social media, and you're gonna start generating free sales. Not, I'm not talking about paid ads here. I'm not talking about Facebook ads. I'm not talking about Instagram ads, Twitter ads, LinkedIn ads. I'm talking purely generating sales without any cost. And by free, I don't mean free because nothing's free, right? I mean free as in you don't need money to put into it. You can simply put time into it. That would be your investment is putting time into doing this. but. Traditional businesses were built up of uh, brands and people would generally buy from brands. But the way that the future is going and the reason why influencers and why personal brand development is so popular now is because people buy from people. So the first approach to this is actually looking at whether it's you or whether it's other people in your organization uh, 
using a brand ambassador or multiple brand ambassadors to deploy this method that I'm going to walk you through here today. And there's actually a term for it too. It's called social selling. So when it comes to social selling, there's four, there's four major pillars or four major components that I'm going to break down and give you all the steps on how to do this. But, but just so you know, the term of it is social selling, just like social selling is kind of like content marketing, right? Uh, it's kind of a buzzword, but social selling is where the marriage between sales and marketing occurs using social media platforms as the deployment uh, medium. Now, this is where people get stuck. This is where people get hung up. This is where people lose. And this is where people start to, to fail at this stuff is they see this term and then they think it's, oh, well I go out to social media and I start selling people, right? It's a good way to lose people. It's a good way to lose friends and family too, is you just go out to social media and you just start pitching people. Uh, and it's a good way to turn off potential clients, turn off potential prospects. So it's not about that. There's a much more artful approach to this. And again, it's not, there, there is no secret sauce. There is no secret system, secret social media system uh, behind generating sales from social. It's really about having the right pieces in place and then, and, then, and then staying consistent with it. So actually getting started and then staying consistent with it is the most important thing. So make sure you're taking notes, make sure you're jotting this stuff down. Again, if you have any questions, I should be able to catch you here, whether you're watching after the fact or you're gonna watch now. You can just jot them down into the chat box or whatever here, and I'm gonna get rolling with the first phase here. So, because this is built around your social profile, your individual social profiles, rather than just your company's page, because we're not running ads, we're trying to do this organically, we're trying to build these relationships completely organic, uh, there's four things you have to have in place, mm -hmm. right? And number one, starts with messaging. Now don't mistake messaging, by messaging I do not mean messaging like messaging people on social media. So let's look at if you're using Instagram or you're using Facebook, or you're using Twitter, or you're using my favorite, which is LinkedIn, messaging creates meaning, okay? Most people tend to structure their social media profiles almost like, put them together like it's a resume. So if you're a coach, um, maybe you kind of put some coachy related stuff there, but if you just have like coach or something super generic on your social media profiles, then you're gonna lose people with your messaging. Your messaging on your social media profiles, think of it like this. Instead of having to go out and drive a bunch of, bunch of traffic to your website or focus around building traffic around your website uh, or you know invest a bunch of money in your website, your social media profiles are kind of like a microsite. Right, I call them like a micro website. So it's like a mini landing page or a mini website. And just like a website, messaging is massively important because when you're putting the other pieces in place to this system, pieces in place to this process, if you can say that 10 times fast, um, then, uh, then, then everything comes back to your messaging. So you have literally seconds to capture somebody's attention same as when someone lands on your website, you have seconds to capture their attention. So when looking at the starting phases of funneling sales to you, your messaging is massively important. What do you do? How do you help people? What's the end result of this, right? So how you help versus what you uh, I was gonna I was gonna cheat and put 
you, but that might look kind of silly. What you do. Okay. And it doesn't have to literally be, I help people become physically fit. Or I help people find the right insurance provider. Or I help people market their businesses. That's far too broad. It's far too uh, wide open, right? And the, and the problem with social media is there's so much noise out there. There's a lot of noise. So I'm a huge proponent of niching down focus. And you should definitely be thinking about this. Like if you're watching this and you're planning on starting a business, starting, I did a, I did a, a live stream last week on starting a podcast, right? So if you plan on starting that podcast, starting that business, you need to niche yourself. You need to, you need to have focus because if you don't, you're going to get lost in all the noise of other people who are in a similar space to what you do, no matter what you do. This happens, this is happening in every industry. Uh, disruption is happening left and right. People are starting businesses. Mom and pops are starting businesses from scratch. So it's not a new thing, but um, who can you help more specifically? People get so scared of this, right? In their messaging, especially on social media, they wanna, they wanna come across as anything to everybody because they feel if they focus themselves down, they're gonna lose potential sales opportunities. It's quite the opposite. So by niching yourself, you're able to come across as an expert, you're able to charge more for your services, and you're able to break through the noise, all the other noise that's out on social media, and that all comes down like, there's prime real estate in each social media platform. So in Instagram, it's the bio. In LinkedIn, it's the headline in the title section. In Facebook, there's another bio there. So people, it's, it's everything, by, by this, it's everything above the fold. It's the very first thing that people see when they log into your social media platform or, or, or go check out your social media pages. It's the very top stuff. And you need to have something in there that's unique enough that'll interest that person in either talking to you. So the goal here is to bring people there, get them to either reach out to you and talk to you because timing's right, or to at least connect with you or follow you or whatever, wherever you subscribe to you, whatever the platform is. This is relevant, by the way, across all social media platforms. I just so happen to focus around LinkedIn um, and, and, and we'll talk about that here in just a second, but this is relevant across all social media platforms. Hopefully you guys can hear okay here. This is always sketchy when you're trying to run this on your own. Okay, so messaging is number one. So, oh, and, and by the way, if you have this in place, a lot of people do have this, they, um, but it takes testing. Nothing is ever set in stone. Nothing is ever static. It's always a ever change. You gotta test, you gotta refine, you gotta make adjustments. But the very first thing you need to go in and do is set it up like you're setting up a website, like you're building a brand new website is crafting that, that landing page, crafting that microsite. And it all starts with messaging. So this is why I say like, if you're watching the damn thing, if you're watching the damn thing right now, or you're watching the thing after the fact, uh, make sure you're taking notes on this because I'm gonna erase this as I go along. Okay, number two. I hope I spelled that right. So engagement is what the activity is to drive eyeballs to your messaging. You have your messaging set up. Think of it like you have your website set up. Engagement is the vehicle that brings eyeballs there. And there's certain ways, you know, some people may just stumble upon you but you want to get really targeted people to your messaging or yeah, you want to get really targeted people over to your messaging and engagement's the only way to make this happen next to content, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Now by engagement, 
I don't mean you just go out and you connect with a bunch of people, you start spamming a bunch of people, you start sending people a bunch of sales messages on social media, right? I'm not talking about like going out and spamming the masses because you're gonna lose people. And this is a long-term game. Take a quick sip here. Hopefully you like my mug, by the way. Social selling animal. So this is a long-term game. If you're getting into social media for quick over the night lead generation, uh, this is not the right approach for you because it takes time to build up. It's like, a f like the flywheel, right? You get it turning, get it turning, you get it spinning, and eventually it just starts you know, propelling upon itself. Social media is exactly the same. There is no difference here whatsoever. Now, engagement, there's, a, there's several different ways to go about this. This is part of the reason why I love LinkedIn. Because I can literally say, I sell to CEOs of companies that do $5 million to $500 million. And they're in the IT space. Or let's say I'm a health and fitness coach and I sell to busy entrepreneurs or busy CEOs. Or I'm a real estate agent and I only sell to people in Colorado. You can literally use LinkedIn use upgraded versions of LinkedIn for like a whopping 80 bucks a month and you can go out and you can reach those people uh, on a consistent basis and actually know specifically who to target and how to target. Now there's other ways to do that on like Instagram for example uh, and there's other gurus out there uh, that there's different terms for this but it's basically touch points, touching people. So I can go to LinkedIn and between the touch points there, like profile viewing, engaging with content, uh, connecting with people, leaving comments, leveraging hashtags. I can easily go touch 500 plus massively targeted prospects. Instagram, I can go look at geo tags. So let's say I'm in Colorado and I wanna go and I sell t uh, people homes who are in Colorado. Well, I can go use those geo tags and I can look up my geographic region down here and I can go touch those people that are specifically like focused in Colorado, right in the region. I can even go look at the, like I'm in Rhino, the Rhino area. So it's highly targeted. It's very, very specific. All social media platforms provide these capabilities and again, this doesn't mean just going out and spamming a bunch of people. If you're going to engage, leave relevant, valuable comments, engage with their content, go send connections. Uh, if you have content like free trainings or free products or services, instead of just shoving that stuff in people's face, ask them if they want it, right? That's like, that's like probably the best sales strategy ever is to ask people. And, the, and a major habit is people go to social media and they try to just spam a bunch of people, give people a bunch of links that they don't care about, they don't want. Asking creates the engagement, creates conversation, and ultimately creates sales. But the engagement is going to be the vehicle To your message. So you probably look at your phone while you're sitting on the toilet. I guarantee you, you might be watching this right now and you're on the toilet this very second. Spend those five minutes or however long it takes you, spend those five minutes to go out and start touching people on social. Soft touches. Um, you got to stay consistent with this and we'll, we'll touch on that. But again, if you, if you can't find the, the way to target people that you, that you want on the channel that you want to be on, most of my peers, most people I know, they're going to start with the Facebook. They're going to start with the Instagram. They're going to start with the Twitter. They're going to start with YouTube. I'm a huge, I'm massively bullish on LinkedIn because of the ability with the engagement, with engaging to know and be super hyper targeted on who you're touching. Okay, 
So here's my favorite piece. This, is, this, this next piece is my absolute favorite, and this is something I'm actually using right now. So we touched on messaging. We touched on engagement, driving, driving new connections, new followers, new eyeballs to your messaging. And the third piece of this is probably the most important. So content closes the gap on everything you're doing. Let's say you do take the strategy of your, you know, you're in a multi, you're in MLM or real estate or um, sell product service. Again, whatever, whatever the genre is, this is relevant for everybody. Content provides context, right? Sounds cool too. Content provides the context. And remember we talked about in your messaging, Focus, niching, having a, a high level of uh, focus around what you do and then content brings the context of everything else you want to talk about and how you help people. So when I use LinkedIn, my messaging is specifically targeted towards IT, cybersecurity companies and technology. Uh, and I've even led with just IT, like I'll even sometimes test just using cybersecurity so I use my focus around social selling and sales growth for IT, for cybersecurity, and for tech. That's how I work my messaging uh, out there. Uh, so, but our business doesn't just focus around social selling and doesn't just focus around LinkedIn lead generation, although that's the main thing that I focus on, I use content to provide context for other things. Like we do blogs, we do SEO, we do content marketing, we do content for LinkedIn, we do uh, some consulting, we do some training, right? There's, there's one key thing that's, that's the focus point and then we have several different products and services and I'd imagine the same is for you. I'm sure there's probably multiple things that you do to help people and that's where content comes in. Now here's where people go wrong when it comes to content is they share too much or How do you spell salesy? Somebody tell me. How do you spell salesy? Let's see if I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop something on there. Um, so people are either sharing out 100% other people's content. You're taking blogs from other industry leaders. You're taking content from other resources. Uh, you're taking other people's trainings, other people's stuff. Like all you're doing is sharing other people's stuff. The thing that's gonna help you drive sales and that's gonna help you funnel more people into your messaging and that's gonna help the engagements better convert opportunities is a content that's original to you. Kind of like this, right? I'm doing this video and this is entirely uh, customized, right? I'm, I'm not sharing somebody else's live stream. This is me, so my personality's in it my own content is in it. Um, it's 100% original to me. I founded these principles and you wanna start putting yourself in the same position of authority. That's the thing about social media is there's a lot of gurus out there, a lot of experts, and a lot of them somehow build by not sharing original content. The other thing is you're doing too much salesy stuff. So it's all, you know, hey, opt into my training or come to my meetup or buy my product or service, right? It's all 100% salesy. So that's okay. There's a time and place for con 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 convertible content to get people like over to the other side, but you want the majority of it to be um, different. You want the majority of it to look like this. So here's how you want your content breakdown to be. And again, 
There's a lot of ways to go about using content. Maybe it's a podcast, maybe you're vlogging, maybe you're uh, doing videos, maybe you, you, you perform best with like infographics, uh, or again, writing, like whatever your thing is, or maybe it's all of them. Ideally, you're using more than one channel. There's a lot of different methods for this, but here's how you want the breakdown to actually, uh, this is what you want the breakdown to actually look like here. So on the content side, we want, think of the 80-20 rule, right? You want 80% to be So you want about 80% of this to be, just blinded myself, 80% to be entertaining and educational. This is an educational piece that I'm doing, but I do some fun stuff, right? My podcast is a little more edu is, is a little more entertainment oriented than it is uh, educational oriented. And then actionable, that's where the conversions happen. But see, too many people try to do about 80% actionable stuff and that's why they're not actually getting sales results from social media. Too much salesy, too much spammy. You know, actionable could also be focused around sales content. Hey, buy my, I actually know a lot of you out there do a lot of like multi-level marketing and stuff like that, which is, which is cool. Like that's a legitimate, you know, if you're able to make it work, that's a legitimate way to make money. Um, but all you do is go to social media and you just spam out a bunch of shitty sales content and it fucking turns people off, right? I hate, I, I hate it. So, um, uh, I think I touched on a couple of the main things that I want to touch on the content side. Any questions, by the way, uh, if you're watching this after the fact, or if you're, you know, on here now, it's hard to see cause I've got my laptop and I've got my phone over here, but I really appreciate you. And uh, if you, you know, I'm only doing this one day a week right now, but if, uh, if you want me to, I'll do it more. If you like this stuff, I'll try to try to do it more than one day a week. But right now, Fridays, Fridays is the, the day we're doing this. So content drives the context. Um, it also helps funnel people back to your microsite, your landing page, your, your profile, your social media profile. And then that's where you're going to convert sales. So between engaging from messaging, providing value, you have context, you have content, you have everything in place at this point, you should start seeing opportunity come in because some people who are ready to talk to you and have already identified they need your help, they're gonna start talking to you, they're gonna start reaching out to you, they're gonna start, it, it all starts with like questions. Right, it's, it's the sales process kind of happens on social media. Now, something I wanna touch on that I wasn't planning on diving into today, but I think it's really important, is that you don't actually, don't actually go and sell on social. It's not about going out and pitching and you're, if, if you're doing high, if you're looking to do higher dollar deals, which I don't think there's any of you business owners, entrepreneurs, tech people who I know I'm connected with, um, don't go out and just pitch on social media and you're not going to close deals on social media. If they're valuable deals, you can sell widgets, like you can sell products. Like I could sell coffee mugs on social media. Um, but if you're trying to like, like if I want to take my coffee mugs and I want to go to Walmart, that's where the, that's where the big, that's where the big thing comes in. If I want to go to Walmart and do that, then, um, you're not going to, you're not going to actually sell something on social media. Your intent and your process is going to be much more valuable in closing deals. If you simply just get that person offline, whether it's a coffee meeting I sell and work with people all over the world. I have clients in Australia. Um, 
And uh, so I can't just like sell them on social. I need to get them off the phone. And even at that point, I'm not pitching to them. I'm asking questions and consulting. So I just wanted to touch on that really quick. There's this misconception that you are actually, when I say sales on social media, you're actually selling stuff on social media, but um, it doesn't work like that. Now I'm seeing I went black here, so I'm not sure what happened. Let me double check. Seems to still be working. Huh. See what happened here. There we go. Okay. This is the most important. So you have your messaging down and, and this is where most people um, slack on this, by the way, is you have, you have good messaging and you're engaging with people and you're putting content out there. You're actually providing value. The, the number four step of this and the most important and probably the most the, the biggest missing piece of this is consistency. Consistency is everything. People get so damn, damn hung up on getting started, right? Getting started is easy, uh, especially nowadays because you have so many resources out there to get started, whatever getting started means, starting the podcast, uh, using social media for sales, starting your business. Getting started is easy. Consistency is not easy. And so there's a couple ways you can help stay consistent. Um, accountability, have someone there to keep you accountable. Writing down your goals, okay? So write out a plan. I don't even know which side of this is the actual eraser. I'm just kind of using this at will. Accountable friend. So putting it down on paper. Oh, that was that one. Outsource. If you can afford to do this, that's great. It, but 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 it all starts with putting it down on paper. Like I'm going to I'm going to do a live video. Here here's my thing. Connor's going to do a live video on Friday, right? And then Saturday, I'm going to create, you know, two or three other videos that I'm going to share out throughout the week. And then Sunday, I'm going to write an article that I'm going to share on Thursday. So between that, I have content that's going out every single day of the week because I'm working ahead and I have a plan that I've written down. I can even use an, a, a notebook, right? I can use a notebook and just write it down and keep it on my desk so I know, oh, I'm supposed to post something today. Uh, you can use your phone, use reminders on your phone. Um, but consistency, and it's all habit, right? Uh, social media just becomes a habit after a while. And, uh, and, and once you, when you build a habit, it takes a good 30 to 60 days to build a consistent habit, but it all starts around getting started and staying focused on what's the end result of this. Like, why am I doing this in the first place? Well, I want sales. Uh, I want to empower people. I want to help people. I want to get my messaging out there. Um, I need partners. I want collaborations. What's the end Goal. What's the end vision? That's why I have 75 million written in the corner of my whiteboard over here because my goal is to have the $75 million net worth by the time I'm 30. And that's why I have 100,000 right here because I'm going to help 100,000 uh, people 
and my goal is 75 million in that period of, in the period that I'm going to help a hundred thousand people. So even just numbers, like that's how I remember things is just little like fragmented signifiers, but get it down, get down how you're going to do this. Maybe, maybe you designate 10 minutes a day while you're having a glass of wine at the end of the day, or you're watching Netflix, you can go through your feed. Um, put the engagement process in place, the messaging process in place, put out a plan for content that will help with the consistency. Another thing that helps with consistency is, you know, when you're in the shower and you get ideas or you're just out doing stuff, um, people always think, oh, I'm going to remember that, but we almost never remember stuff. So I write it down. I write stuff down regularly that I need to remember. I have a have a, a, a content feed in my phone on my notes section that I write down video ideas. So this video that I'm doing today, I wrote this down a couple weeks ago that I that today I was gonna do this live video on this particular topic. Um, accountability, friends, you know, maybe you can find someone who's at a similar or even higher level to where you're at come up with a plan to keep each other accountable with social media selling. Maybe it's a colleague, maybe it's another sales rep in your organization. Maybe it's some, you know, someone who's like a friendly competitor or partner of yours, but you're always going to perform better if you can stay consistent, stay con um, or, or stay accountable, stay accountable with somebody. And then lastly, you can outsource this stuff. You can have a team help do these touch points in the background and then you'd be there like a catcher with a catcher's mitt to close the deal, to close the sales. This is something we do for our clients on LinkedIn is they're busy, they're CEOs, they're running multi-million dollar organizations, um, they're, they're too busy to spend the the day-to-day -day grunt work of touching people. They're not, they're not marketing people so they don't know how to put the messaging in place. They don't know the process to produce content. So they pay us every month to get it done for them. And there's lots of other people out there that can do that for you also, depending on your budget, depending on your industry, what you're doing, hire an assistant, uh, have a friend, have a little sibling do it for you, but outsource it. You can outsource this stuff and get it done and have the consistency in place. So just as a recap, um, messaging is number one having the right kind of messaging on your social media profiles, individual profiles, your company brand, you could probably be a little more high level because you have your brand attached to it. Um, but even still, having a focused message around your brand, but most importantly, your individual brand ambassadors in your company, or if you are your company, then it's you. Messaging, <laughs> excuse me, number two, engagement, number three, Content, content drives the context. And number four is consistency. Consistency is what will keep you in front of people, will turn you into a thought leader. There's a lot of fly-by-nighter social media uh, people or fly-by-night people who are trying to sell on social media. And so the thing that's going to make this work for you is the consistency. Hope that was helpful, guys. Let me know, drop a comment, share this with your people, share this with anybody. Uh, if you wanna collaborate on any content together, I'm always open for it. Uh, just send me a note. Uh, hope you have a fun fun Friday. And if there's other topics that you want to want me to expand upon or want me to, to do or produce, um, 